from your perspective, what are the、uh, motivations behind President Xi Jinping's 2013 proposal for this initiative?、Mm. Well, I think the the world, if if you look at globalization in general, the world has benefited a lot from the opening up globally、uh, since the end of the Cold War,、uh, with with much greater flow of、uh, trade.、Uh, but beyond that, also in terms of information and knowledge, the world has has really、um, become a, a much more integrated、uh, global economy. Um, and I, I think that had very positive advantages for many countries, and particularly developing countries. I think, including, of course, China. Looking ahead, we also see that investments、uh, and, and globalization hasn't touched all countries equally.、Uh, there have been some winners, many winners, in fact, and, and, and some losers. I think the, the Belt and Road、um, is that、um, understanding that we need to also look at. For ways and means to continue in terms of, of globalization and to widen the integration of、uh, of different、uh, countries. I mean, as I said earlier, many countries have not necessarily、uh, benefited from globalization. They have not benefited from foreign direct investment in the past.、Uh, their infrastructure is poor. Their energy requirements are not being met, and so on. So I think they're. Many investment opportunities that have been neglected in the past to help countries、um, integrate better into the world economy. But to do that, they do need investments、uh, in industrialization, in energy, in infrastructure. And、uh, I think this will be a boost、uh, for the world's economy and a boost for China, which is the largest trading economy in the world. So I, I think this is a potentially very positive. As I said, I mean, one also has to make sure that risks are taken care of, that the investments are done in a sustainable way,、uh, and that the countries receiving the investments have the absorptive capacity to make to optimize their use.、Yeah. Uh, in your opinion, what are the、uh, sustainability problems、hmm. faced、hmm. by the countries in、hmm. the construction of、uh, the Belt and Road Initiative, and、hmm. uh, how can such problems be tackled? As I was saying in the opening, the Belt and Road Initiative does provide a number of important opportunities for enhanced global development.、Uh, but at the same time, there are a number of risks that need to be acknowledged and, and to be mitigated.、Um, when one looks at the opportunity side, of course, this is an important platform for globalization. It's bringing many countries into the global trading system potentially.、Um, Which have not been recipients of, of, of much investment in the past,、uh, so it's actually providing capital to countries that have been neglected in the past. So I think this gives a very good opportunity in terms of investment. But at the same time, in the United Nations, of course, we're looking at more than just economic development. We're, we're looking at、uh, social and human development, and for that we have the 2030 Agenda. On sustainable development, and I think also the Belt and Road provides opportunities in that area as well.、Um, the sustainable development goals are about the quality of development, but they're also needing increased resourcing for development.、Uh, the financial side of development is also very important, and we're looking for literally trillions of dollars of extra investment over the years up to 2030.、Um, and if the Belt and Road、um, Initiative Is aligned with the sustainable development goals. If it's investing in the kind of sectors that are covered by the sustainable development goals, if it can generate employment, if it can、um, help、um, countries in increase their、uh, growth rate, but also do it in a sustainable way in terms of environmental and social sustainability, then I think there's that opportunity also、uh, for economic development, but also human development, which is very important. Now, at the same time, of course, as with any investments, there are risks involved, and and how do we、uh, deal with those risks? And and you asked about that. I, I think some of the risks are for the Chinese investors. What kind of knowledge do they have of the countries they're investing in? Do they understand the local environment well? Do they have a good institutional knowledge of the country、uh, and the investment climate and so on, and and understand the risks involved? 
but also for the destination country their risks. Does the country have strong regulatory frameworks? Does it have strong institutional capacity? Is the country ensuring that the investments are optimized? Do they have the absorptive capacity? Have they ensured the investments are closely in line with their national development priorities? So the answers to these questions will be different for each country. Some countries have planned very well, and they have strong absorptive capacity, good institutions and so on. Other countries maybe need more support in these areas. And I think this is where we, we can look in the United Nations to help mitigate some of these risks. We are working in all developing countries and, and we have the experience of providing support to the destination countries in terms of capacity development and certainly we uh, feel it is important that these investments are optimized. In this case we're talking about Belt and Road but it applies to any investment in a country right. that we need to make sure that whether it's public investment or private investment domestic investment or foreign investment, that these investments are optimized to maximize the return for ordinary people in the country. And this is what we do as part of our work in the United Nations. So I think the, the risks can be mitigated, but they need to be understood clearly country by country. And we have to make sure that the investments are um, handled in a sustainable manner in terms of environment, in terms of social issues, in terms of uh, financial risks as well. Oh, thank you. So I know you have a very busy time, thank and you. Uh, I really appreciate. And uh, well, so hope we could have more time. Yeah, I hope so. Next too. time, thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you for having me. Thank you.